Listen, baby, listen. I am super, super excited. I have a very special guest. With me, I have Loso. A very, very talented battle rapper. He's been on URL and a few other things. Like, I'm going to let him talk about himself for a split, split second. Loso. What's up, man? man? Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, um, Loso, uh, battle rapper, primarily a battle rapper, also national recording artist, um, uh, a poet. I tour um, in the autumn, in the fall. I tour every year uh, with a poetry team. But um, yeah, been on URL TV, been on uh, Lifetime with the rap game. Um, you know, uh, been awarded uh, you know different awards as far as within the battle rap culture and even outside. Okay. Um, was won a Latin Trailblazer Award um, and uh, was awarded by uh, Mike Pence, the vice president at mm. the time. Um, and so uh, it's a couple different things and whatnot, but just trying to look. And then what a lot of people don't know too is that I'm also a teacher. I, I teach, yeah, I'm a 12th grade teacher. I teach American government. And so, um, yeah, I try, to, I try to keep my hand in, in a bunch of different pockets, but yeah. Listen, you got two teachers here. I'm staying in elementary school. I'm going to stick with my mm -hmm. fifth graders for sure. Listen, so I'm super, super excited. Um, mm -hmm. I stumbled across your page okay. and I really was like, oh, this this some real for real stuff. Like he's very, very talented. <laughs> um, it reminded me, I think it was Rhythm and Flow. I think yeah. it was with T.I. Uh -huh. Chance and yeah, Cardi B. Yeah. It's the one dude, the one. Flawless. Yes. That's what you remind me of. Like. That's my boy. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you know him. Yeah, no, we. That's like legit, my boy. Oh, that's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's what you reminded me of. Um, and I was like, oh my god, like, yeah. and I kept replaying <laughs> and playing it back, like your, yeah. your demeanor and everything, yeah. like your delivery. That's what it reminded me of. Um, so let's get into this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say got you into music? Um, man, I would say uh, growing up though, mm -hmm. my father. So unfortunately, um. At a young age, I lost my father probably around the age of 12. But prior to that, I mean, it was a, I was already in a single household, but he was murdered at 12. Oh, wow. And I remember at that time kind of thinking to myself, like, man, I kind of need, like, a father figure. Or where do I go to to find, like, what it, what it looks like to be a man or what it means to be a man? And so at the time, the only thing that I really knew um, was hip-hop. And wow. so we was in Queens, New York at the time, and me being the oldest of a, of a single parent household, mm -hmm. um, I tried to mimic what I saw in the music video. So hip hop wasn't just teaching me how to dress and talk, but it was teaching me indirectly, unfortunately, teaching me how to treat a woman or teaching me what it what it means to, you know, uh, be financially secure wow. or this, that, this, that, and the third. And so for me at the time, I was trying to navigate through that uh, as I got older. Um, I just remember like anytime I would listen to like lyrics, whether it was Jay-Z, whether mm -hmm. it was Fabulous, Jay at, the, at this time or what, Lil Wayne, I would just like listen to them. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because I wanted to be a rapper. I would just write down their lyrics because I really wanted to know what they were saying and I wanted to be able to say it with them. And so I didn't know at that time, but I was practicing um, wow. uh, rapping at that time and, and kind of gaining my own delivery. And so I tell people all the time, like if you're looking to be a rapper, like you got to first learn to imitate. And then learn to kind of like be yourself. Same thing like a chef. You know, wow. kind of like a chef doesn't just go in and just create his own meal. He mm -hmm. starts using other people's ingredients. And when mm -hmm. he starts using other people's ingredients, then you start adding, okay, cool, I'm gonna add to my make own, it your own. Right? Mm -hmm. You add a little bit of lemon. And so when that when that was that, that's what I was doing. I was basically using other people's ingredients, but then as I started writing myself, mm -hmm. I found myself adding lemon to it. You know what I'm saying? Basically, okay, cool, this is my punchline. This is how I want to deliver things. And so, um, as I got older, I ended up, uh, really what started it was probably around, like, I want to maybe say, like, 2007. Mm -hmm. I was volunteering at a juvenile detention center. I was just helping some inner city kids at this time, and they had did an open mic, and they wanted uh, me to kind of just try it. I had never wrote anything before. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wrote, um, you know, like a 16 bar, and I went in front of all the kids, but there was a guy who, was, mm -hmm. who just happened to be there that day. And he had a studio and he had heard me just rapping. He said, yo, um, y'all got a studio. You want to just come check it out? And wow. I said, all right, cool. So I went and we went to the studio and he just put on some beats and he was like, start writing. I was like, what? And uh, he just, but he taught me on how to write on the spot. Wow. How to just come up with different concepts and stuff. And so for about two years, I was just working with him real close. And then from there, I kind of gained like a, um, a desire of my own mm. to kind of like create music. But 
even at that time, I had just, I, I, I had already been introduced to battle rap. Uh-huh. And I knew that, like, um, the competitiveness of hip-hop was kind of what really, really got my attention, more so than just making music. I love making music, but the competitiveness of it, like being in front of people, watching 8 Mile, I remember watching 8 Mile, and stuff <laughs> like that, like, like that just kind of, even competitions, like when I was watching 106 in Park growing up as a kid, I used to love Freestyle Fridays, or even like that show you just talked about with mm-hmm. Rhythm and Flow and Flawless, like those things to like always grab my attention more so than a concert. And so um, that's how I kind of like transitioned into it. So do you would you say your culture like influenced you to Oh yeah become yeah, your, yeah. Your culture? yeah definitely especially like just within the household like my cousin I had two older cousins at the mm-hmm. time and they were both separately doing different things like that but I mean I would be outside and they would just be uh you know freestyling mm-hmm. or, or or I would I remember I vividly remember being at a young age catching my cousin just randomly battling a, a dude from the, you know, that lived under us in the project. Oh, wow. Somehow. And so, uh, but that was just what hyped me up. Like, even at a young age, I mean, I remember obviously listening to the radio all the time and, and or buying CDs from certain artists, but the battles, mm-hmm. like, that's what, especially when, once YouTube popped off, I used to be on YouTube 24-7 looking up my favorite battlers. Okay, okay. So, how would you describe the music that you create? Like, yeah. how would you describe it? Um, so when I do create music, uh, like I said, because I'm so primarily mm-hmm. focused in, in battling, um, I think that uh, if if I was to put something on it, it would just be like hope. I, I don't mm. I, I don't necessarily create music just for the um, enjoyment for the consumer. Oh, I wow. think it's more so like, yo, I'm going through this. It's, wow. it's a lot introspective. I'm going through this. This is like my perspective on this specific topic. So for instance. Me and another artist, we may both be talking about um, women, but instead of talking about this, I'd rather just talk about, okay, this particular, I know this particular girl who was struggling with her rant and she went this route and this, so I want to make a song about that or uh, about a single mother or about, you know, how you do have value, uh, something like so that. So you're, you're saying versus they may be um, like... As far as womanizing or yeah, degrading yeah, 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 or demeaning, yeah, yeah. and you don't take that approach. You, which is yeah, and and don't get me wrong. Like I understand within hip hop, you right. have different avenues in which right. you can do that, right? There's people who you know they just and they they'll tell you like, hey, you know what? I'm not necessarily uh, degrading all women, or I don't want. It's not that I don't love women. I'm just making this song because I know it's gonna hit. That's cool. Okay. Me personally. I, I'm not looking to have like a big club record. You know what I'm mm. saying? If that comes, that comes or whatnot. So whenever I write, I kind of just write from a place of uh, of need. I write from a place where I kind of treat, for me, whenever I do go into a studio um, and I'm kind of like delivering content, I kind of treat it like a, I tell people I treat it like I'm a firefighter in front of a burning Put building. Check. So like I run in. Put the fire. I see, I see who needs my help. <laughs> And I run out before that thing comes crashing down, you know what I'm saying? So that, because that's really what, if you think about it, like a lot of people, um, uh, whenever they get into that, they'll, they'll, they will easily kind of like get consumed with like the, um, the obligation to kind of like do what everybody Mm -hmm. else is on Mm -hmm. on radio, right? And saying like, man, okay, this is a sound, this is the content that's doing it. I want to make people dance or whatnot. But for me, I just know I got a message that I want to deliver sometimes whenever I do get into that mode. Get in and then you know and just and just let the rest be you know whatever happens with it. Mr. Fire Fire Firefighter yeah, putting yeah, yeah. fires out. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> and I, I heard what you were saying. I feel like um like a lot of that is your poetic background as yeah. well, like that mm-hmm. aspect because you know you put a lot of emotions in. And not saying that yeah. regular rap doesn't have, but I feel yeah. like just just listening to your perspective on a lot of things, like yeah. as you're talking now. Mm-hmm. Um. If you could collaborate with anyone at this point in time, who would it be? Um, I would probably say J. Cole. I think he's just an a artist in which, like, he's kind of consistent mm-hmm. with uh, just his worldview and kind of how he carries himself. And one, I just think he's talented as far as musically and, and, and rapping and stuff like that. But two, a lot of his music is, is content driven mm-hmm. and, and has, like, a theme that he's kind of following with. And a lot of times what he is talking about... I find myself agreeing with wholeheartedly. Like him just even doing a song called Love Yours, just about being content mm. with your household or your or, or your life. And, and like, no, there's no better life than the life that you're living. 
um, I remember just listening to that and I was like, oh yeah, I, I, I feel that. And, and I needed to hear that as well. So coming along somebody who's already, who's always looking out um, into the world and saying, okay, well, what message, what needs mm -hmm. to be talked about and him doing it at the highest level, I think that'll be an honor to kind of tap in with him. So this is a little like off. Are you just listening to you? So mm -hmm. are you a romantic like? Man, you know what? I am not. You're not? Nah. I tell people, I tell, I, tell crazy. I let I let people know that from the gate. Like I, I don't know. So with me, I am I am I care a lot about people and I will even care about but if there's like some sort of like burden on me to care for you in a romantic like as far as flowers. Like, I suck at that. I suck at, like, dates. Lord, teach I suck at that. Yeah, yeah. And it's not even about, you know, it is. I don't know if it's, like, because I know, I know what to do. Right. I just think that I'm more of a, um, just one-on-one. -on -one. Like, if, if I'm one-on-one, -on -one, and with words, I'm good with words, though. I'm good with words. Baby, get with yeah. them actions. If that's, if that's, if that's romance, if you say that that's romance, then I'm okay. Because I could definitely. So, you I write a poem? Like, you would write your girl <clears throat> a poem or someone you're interested in? Would you I write them a poem? I could. But I don't want to lie on this camera and say that I would. Because I've never done it, though. I said I, I've never written a poem for a woman. So possibly it's because you haven't met the right woman that would... Bring that out of me? Yeah. Because I feel like you, it, it'll just come mm -hmm. naturally. This I just a, feel you haven't... This turned into a therapy session. I no, like I'm sorry. No, I'm, I like I'm, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm just, I'm <laughs> just No, but saying. you're probably right, though. You're yeah. probably right. I, I mean, so when I do create, even with creating poems, though... Um, like even you mentioned earlier, you was like, mm -hmm. you know, that poetic background kind of causes you to kind of like give like a message. Yeah. Because, you know, a poem is there's always gonna be some sort of content you want to follow the theme. So when I when I do it, I, I do put my my heart and my soul into it. But when it comes to like being direct with an individual, like a lady that I'm pursuing, I don't know if I'm like I just I just know I feel straight from the gate. Look, I'm not that romantic, but I do like you though. Yeah, I try to. Well, how besides <laughs> just telling them you like them, how are you showing them these things? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, right. a, maybe a kiss. This is. <laughs> Loso, yeah, listen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, after I this camera's cut off, we got to <laughs> Listen. Okay, you being honest. Uh, um. <laughs> so, what would you be doing right now if you weren't rapping? What would you be doing? Because you got a lot of stuff going on. You're, yeah. you're educated. Man, if but, I could choose, I would. Yeah. I would be an actor. You would? I, and I just started like tapping into it lately, but uh, my boy, he owns a production company mm -hmm. out in LA, and so he's been needing some people to kind of like volunteer. So I've been doing it just to kind of get uh, some reps in, but I I love just being um, able to kind of like tap into like a different persona. Mm -hmm. uh, like even for me, like I, I remember this this one dude, he just told me, he just wrote something and he has like this like... Uh, it's like evil toxic boyfriend, and I was just like, "Yo, I want to play that." <laughs> I was, I was like, that, sound, that question. Yo, that's out. That sounds like a like a dope, you know, character or whatnot. And then and then right with my other boy, like I'm playing like this, like it's like a comedy joint, but I'm like this like lawyer that's like a scammer at the same time. What? Yeah, and like and so it's funny, but but I but it's not me, but I love doing it though. You know what I'm saying? So right, um, just kind of breaking you know breaking the mode of of what people would think that I normally I'm, okay I would do. I kind of like doing those other because I, I like people seeing me in like different different scenarios and stuff. So I would definitely be acting. That's, that's funny because I was just about to ask you what would be your ideal role to play. Mm -hmm. Um, and is it any, any of those two you mentioned, or is it something totally different from what you just said? I'm trying to think of a role that's out that that's I the really love boy love. that don't like to be giving flowers. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> uh, um, man, something I would I would think like. Um, something along the lines of like what Michael B. Jordan kind of finds himself doing, whether it's with Creed, Michael. <laughs> yeah, whether it's with Creed or like even before that when mm -hmm. he did Fruitville Station. Okay, and yeah. So um, I kind of like I think that would be the ideal one where it's like this like real heartfelt um, and even telling a story or something like that. I would love that, but at the same time, I also feel like I could do it all if I if I was given the opportunity. I know that's why. Right. And I would love and I would love to do it so. I'm him. That's what you say, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> him, baby. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what would be your like? What's your ideal? What's your favorite place to perform? Like when you're performing, is it like mm -hmm. the the battle right like rap type thing? Like when y'all in the ring type yeah, thing? Yeah. Or? So I've so I've done so I've done um, big concerts before. Mm -hmm. I've done. Um, big battles before and, and, and then I've done poetry you know and, and we've done I did a 10 week tour uh, mm -hmm. just not too long ago and so 
and we're actually performing at the University of Delaware coming up too uh, with some poetry. But Ooh. I think for me, nothing will ever replace the high of a battle. And the reason I say that is because when I'm doing poetry and even music, mm -hmm. people are there and they're waiting to, um, like they, they, one, they might know your songs or if they not know your songs, you could teach them your songs. They could sing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, they, and for the most part, they're going to, they're, they're, they want to listen and they kind of, even if they're not listening, they're not going to be too disrespectful where they're kind of just moving away. Battle rap, the reason why it's so rewarding is because you have to earn your reaction. Mm. Like you're competing against somebody and there's so many different, and, and the stakes are higher. Like I have to be perfect. If I'm doing a song, I can, I can go ahead and mess up on a word. I can, I can make sure right. that the track is in the background. There's, there's so many different things that will help me perform well. Spoken word, same thing, right? I can kind of take my time right. with, with how I do it. And also the people in the crowd, like, they're so, they're just so yeah, ready to just, yeah, exactly. they're going to awesome. love anything that you say. Right. <laughs> Battle though, the fans there, they're, they're the harshest fans, but they're the, they're the most rewarding fans as well. Like when they're in the building, they're, they're paying their hard earned money to come see these two guys compete. And you have to be your best. One, you gotta, you're in front of this dude who's obviously battling mm -hmm. you. You got his entourage who's heckling you. You got all the people watching. You got the cameras, the lights, everything. And then you got to be on cue. You can't mess up because you're memorizing it or, or either freestyling. And if you stumble, the crowd's going to let you know. They're going to boo. Or if you just if you rock the crowd, like if you get like a punchline off, I tell people all the time, like the building shaking. My, my, my best moment was probably in Houston. And we uh we did it at the uh, spot called the warehouse. It was a legendary mm -hmm. uh, venue out there, and um, 2,500 people, 2,500 oh, wow. people there. And I remember landing like one of my first punchlines there, and I felt like the ground shaking, like it? they were just they were just rumbling. Do you remember the punchline? Yeah, it was uh so I was in Houston. And I did a Mike Jones one, and um, man, what was it? I said uh two a one three three uh. Man, what was the what was the end of the line? Um, oh, I I I, 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 I yeah, yeah yeah I mean I got I got the I got the framework of it, but but it's on there. Watch out, uh, Loso versus Scotty. Um, it's okay. On, it's on YouTube. But I remember the the crowd kind of just like erupting and me thinking to myself like, oh. yo, like the goosebumps that you get, and then wow. even and even like after the after the battle, like them coming up to you and just saying like. Yo, man, and this is all acapella. Mm -hmm. This isn't, you know, they could easily be at a, like, you got to think about it. Drake and J. Cole, they on tour right now, right? They performing the same songs oh, every, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. every, every, so it's not like they got to prepare. It's not like they got to, right. you know, write new material. Like they perform, they perform these songs hundreds of times already and they're going to be performing again. And on, on top of that, everybody there, they know the songs. They could just rap the songs with right. them. Right, and I'm very For a battler, it's new material every time. And these fans are wanting to hear something refreshing that they never heard before. So I would say that the high of it, don't get me wrong, it's the hardest to do but the high of it is the most rewarding it's the y'all gotta be in each other's face mm -hmm. like how do you yeah. maintain composure like that's yeah i tell people it's the money like if it wasn't the money i'll probably i'll be like yeah. this close you gotta, you gotta think about it. you sign contracts for it you know what I'm right. saying? You sign contracts, so if there's any altercation not like that that could that could ruin your your money but on top of that we don't we at this level the professional level that i'm at we know it's a sport. You know what I'm saying? It's not like two guys just meeting at the uh, at, in the middle of the street just saying, "Oh yeah, I rap better than you." Like there's contracts involved, there's money involved, there's 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 people, there's there's businesses, cameramen, and so when I'm rapping, okay. I I I understand that that person, whatever he's saying to me, although it may offend me, he may be crossing the line. I signed up for this, and vice versa. Cause I remember watching like a while ago. I think it was Murder Mook and like a lot of those like they be like serious. They like about yeah. to fight in the yeah. so yeah, and then. All of you be on the stage like they're entourage, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, that's very. So you, I feel like you really have to be a content person, a very confident person to mm -hmm. be up there with all those people. Just yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so my next question is, at what point did you begin to take accountability for like your career, like where you wanted it to go, like whether that's a good thing or bad thing? At what mm -hmm. point did you realize like, yo, I could do this, or I need to cease doing this right here so that I can focus more on this. So there was two, I had two checkpoints. One, um, there was a competition in Chicago. This is the first time I had ever uh, even thought about this. I you know, I had just been doing like some freestyles and some spoken word, but mm -hmm. there was a competition called Rapzilla. It was mm -hmm. a 16 bar competition out in Chicago. Hundreds of rappers at that time were submitting um, videos of them rapping to get chosen. Okay. So I was just like, all right, cool. I'll just do one. And I did one, wrote it out. 
and uh, and I was I was chosen as one of the ten finalists. They uh, they flew you out to Chicago and you competed there. This is the, I've never done anything like this. I was super nervous. I'm in the back about to throw up, like everybody else in the green room ready. And so mm. um, we go and they set the bracket up and it's ten people and. Um, one of the judges, his uh, his name is Jen. He's a huge uh, freestyle champion. He was on 106 and Park? 106 okay, Park. Yes, yep. yes, yes, Sound yes, of yes, Friday, yes. Fast and Furious, all that, right? And so he's there, and he's one of the judges. And when I was in the bracket, I was one of the first people to, to compete. And you weren't battling your opponent. What you were doing, you wrote, like, these, like, 16-bar verses, and you sent them to the crowd, and they would go crazy, and whoever had the better verse moved Oh, on. wow. That's different. So... Uh, I go out there like I said I'm super nervous but long story short I win the whole tournament first time I ever did it I won the whole tournament your first time ever battle first time I ever did it first time I ever did it I wow. won, I, I won the whole tournament and Jim pulls me aside and he says have you ever thought about battle rapping like on snack and stuff I was like bro I, can, I can't do that and he was like no I think you I think you can like, wow and he was giving me the cosign I was just like bro like there's no way I can do what y'all have done or, or, or the people who are doing it now. Like, I can't memorize that much material. He said, bro, I think you should. And so wow. I remember going home and I put up on Facebook and I said, um, yo, are there any leagues in Tampa? Any, any like, mm -hmm. you know, startup leagues that I could just try out for? I just want to see if I could do it. And um, there was a league owner by the name of Annex. Uh, he, he has a Tampa league called Enter the Dungeon. And he said, yo, I know you don't have no footage, but do you have any footage of you just rapping? So I sent him like some footage mm -hmm. of me rapping. And maybe about 20 minutes later, he wrote back. He said, wow. where the hell have you been? 20 minutes later? 20 minutes later. He wrote me back. He said, where the hell have you been? And so I did it. And so at that moment, mm -hmm. that was my first time saying to myself, okay, I need to um, kind of like, you know, take this serious. Right. Because the ripple effects of me battling had so, it, it was it, so many people had kind of like, you know, poked their head in and was like, yo, who's this guy? And, and, and how's he doing this? And yada, yada. And then the second time was... I was teaching, I just started, I, I recently just started teaching again, but mm -hmm. I was teaching from 2015 to 2019, and okay. right at 2019, I had uh, started uh, gaining so much momentum that um, I kept having to take off. I had to get a substitute so, while my kids, because I, I would have like different events, and so um, I, I had came to my school, and it was like, you know, I'm, I had a real good relationship with all the students, and so it was a sad day for them, oh. but I basically told them like, yo... I'm going to do this full time. And I've done it. And I've done it full time this whole time. I recently just um, uh, got hired back on um, with a principal that I used to work with. He, okay. he needed some, um, he needed like a teacher to kind of step in. And, and because uh, I have a good relationship with him, so Same. I just started doing it. But that was a, that was another moment in which I said to myself, okay, mm. let me just take this serious. And, and a lot came from it. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of dope uh, opportunities from there. Yes. How do you feel um, social media has impacted your um, career? Uh, yeah, it's, it's helped tremendously. Social media, you know, I, I feel like every couple of years you have like a new platform, right? Right. Now, TikTok, you know, it's like the platform that you, you do TikTok. There. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm on TikTok. I try to put my content on there. Okay. Um, but uh, but Instagram, you know, that's kind of like my one stop shop. Like okay. You could, Instagram's kind of made it to the point where you could put up content. You could also sell your merch. You could also, you know, have Everything. a personality. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can do it all, you know. So, and then Twitter, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter as well. So, I have a good following with all three of them. Um, I think I could do a better job at kind of navigating my content through it. But, okay, more strategic. Uh, but nonetheless, though, I think social media is just pivotal in, in 2024. So, Mr. Rapper, Mr. Teacher, Mr. Poet, how is your love life? Uh, Do you attract the ladies with all this you got going on? Uh, I guess so. I mean, I guess they. What's the guess, man? I mean, like it. a like a like a track. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna sit up here and and, and pretend like uh, there aren't lady fans or whatnot. But I I do think though that there is a difference between mm. um, being attracted to like Loso the the figure that you may see on social media. And I, I always tell, I, like I, I told, I told this one person, I was just like, man, I'm kind of like a, uh, I'm like an animal at the zoo, maybe like a lion or something oh like Lord. that. Oh, Lord. Well, like you're walking by, like you're walking by, you see the lion in the cage, you like, man, that lion's cool. Until you get in the cage, you're like, oh, the lion's not that cool anymore. Let me you know out. <laughs> and so for me, I'm just like, 
you may be seeing something online that you probably like really really attracted to or you like but you got to understand like all of us where where i mean even you know i'm pretty sure there's there's stories that you have where like you know you may have got to know somebody or vice versa even for you right like when they get to know you like you got to be able to see the ugly and say yo i want to go ahead and and kind of move forward with this and so i just think that the space that i'm in and um and the manner in which I kind of like conduct myself, I want to make sure that whoever I do get alongside with understands like uh, this is the common goal. I want to make sure that they have an interest uh, in the things that I have interest in, but vice versa, me Absolutely. too. Because I'm, I'm a very compromising person as well. Like, I mean, if you don't like something, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Then then if, if that's a non-negotiable for you and I really like you, I'll, I'll drop that. I'll stop doing X, Y, and Z or, or this and third. Now, granted, I'm not, it's not like I'm going right. to stop doing my career or nothing like that, but I'm talking about whatever else, whatever else, that's you know, you may have an issue. So, um, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's kind of boring right now because I'm working so much. So, boring mean you, you single, you don't date? Yeah, I don't, and I, I, I mean, I don't, know if I, I don't know if I want to say I don't date. Cause I mean, but you go on a few dates, but nothing. You're you're not taking anything really serious, is what. Man, see, I don't know who's gonna watch this, so I'm trying to like everybody. I'm watch. Trying to, I'm trying to like watch what I say and how I say. It. But what I am saying is that I am primarily loving the space that I'm in, and uh, whatever happens, happens. Right? Oh, he got out of that one good. He did that good. <laughs> Can't miss the tea. <laughs> yes. I'm going to play some more Gatorade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen. So. That's funny to me. That's hilarious. Um, But any, I want to talk about something you just said. Like basically. The battle rap for you and the you are mm-hmm. different. And I think a lot of times people get it misconstrued. They see you on social media. Mm-hmm. And they thinking you're supposed to behave in this manner 24-7. Yeah. Like if you're a motivational person or encouraging yeah. person. Yeah. People think that you don't have lows mm-hmm. or you're always this way, possibly, yeah. but I'm still human. So, yeah. yeah, like you said, to take some of the bad, the rough stuff, like it's not yeah. all good. Like mm-hmm. it's some other stuff you gotta, yeah. you know, cut some weeds and yeah. whip. And even, through. and even, I would even say like the opposite of that. That mm-hmm. could be true as far as like uh, the misconceptions they may have with mm-hmm. you, right? Like people may be watching how you conduct yourself in an interview and thinking like, oh, she's yada yada yada, and, right. get, and then they meet you a person like, oh, she's not like that at all. Like for me, mm-hmm. I've had several people watch my battles and, and you got to think about it i'm competing right? right so like my job is obviously to yell in this guy's face and to to do this and probably and i may and, and i've had several people say like yo i thought you were super prideful you wasn't approachable you would kind of just stand off it's just oh, like wow. that and i guess i give that off in my battles right. or whatever but i mean i've been out you know whether it's been like you know uh at, at certain like football games or hockey games or sports bars or just out at, at the park or basketball where whatever i'm doing and people are just having a conversation with me and I love talking to people. And it's like, man, Loso, I didn't think that you were you, Yeah, that that I, I like I'm much more humble than what they thought they the, the the perception they had in their head. And I kinda like breaking that mold for them too, but that's why I'm overly that's why I make sure like any fan that ever stops me, whether I'm at the airport, whether I'm at a different city or, or whatever, I wanna make sure that they understand like, yo, I'm appreciative of you. Right. Because I mean you don't have to you don't have to uh, be checking in on me or, or watching my stuff. or And I also don't even want you to think that, you know, whatever misconception you did have of me is true without, right. you know, first getting to know me. And so um, I try my best to convey to all of them that, yo, I'm here. I'm in the moment. I, I, I appreciate you. What you, you know, what do you want to know about me? Same thing with you. You know, I don't know if you looked at my IG before and you mm-hmm. thought, man, this interview might be dry. You know what I'm saying? This, he might not. But I, I, I always... Um, I always care, I, I, not so much that you have to care about what people think, but I want to make sure people right. know that I care that they are invested into whatever you, know, you whatever have. I, whatever right, absolutely. On. Absolutely. So listen, I want to ask you this for real. If you, child, not shaking his hands, <laughs> baby, listen. <laughs> this is about to be a regular, yeah. regular. So if you could give the people a piece of advice. Mm-hmm. What would it be? It could be career related, it just yeah. life in general. Yeah. Just what would the advice be? Um, I would say that whatever. First of all, um, whatever you love to do, mm-hmm. whatever your ambition is, right? Uh, definitely, uh, don't worry about the failure behind it or, or the risk that it may take. 
I mean, you are going to, you don't want to go on in life being discontent with the what ifs. Like, wow. man, what if I would have done it? If this was my window of opportunity, what if I would, you don't want to wait five years later and then say, man, I should have done X, Y, and Z. You're always going to, uh, you know, regrets make terrible roommates. You don't want to live with them. Trust wow. me. So as you move forward and you have that one opportunity, run into it. But I will also say, um, be true to yourself and do not lose mm, who, who you, you are. are just for the sake of success success is not a number it is faithfulness and if you are faithful to your calling if you are faithful to whatever you have to do trust me you are going to be content in that for me personally i think like as as i kind of like grow you know my, my brand and stuff i want to make sure that I'm, I'm i'm constantly staying low um and this is to everybody else like whatever success you get i don't care if it's real estate I don't care if it's acting, I don't care if it's battle rapper, I don't care if it's whatever you got, whatever business you own, as success comes, it's going to be, people are going to be less and less tolerant of you Ooh. and um, and you're going to have to find a space in which you have to navigate through the criticism mm. and also the praise. Never let criticism get to your heart and never let praise get to your head. For me, mm. one of the things I kind of live by, man, I never want the light that's on me to be brighter than the light that's in me. Ooh. I got to make sure like as, as the stages get bigger, you know what I'm saying? As, as I'm con constantly like in front of whoever, uh, whatever celebrity or, or whatever, you know, interview or podcast, um, I want to make sure that my character is matching my talent. And that's a struggle. That's a struggle for all of us because, wow. and, and I, I'm not there. I, I, I am, I, I can, I can confidently say that. You know, people may think better of me because I do have a quote unquote platform. But I say, yo, just because I'm I'm doing X, Y, and Z on right. social media or, or or on stage does not mean that I am the voice of all reason or nothing like that. I'm I'm a regular man. I am um I'm I'm a, you know, I struggle just like the rest of you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm learning day by day. I don't have a blueprint in front of me on how to how to do this, you know what I'm saying? Really but, but with at the people. same time though, um I do think that it is important that the people who are closest to me know um, that Loso, uh, Carlos, who that's my name, you know what I'm saying? Carlos isn't getting lost in the persona of Loso as well. Um, and maybe some people might have felt that way, you know, in, in the past with me. And, and, you know, I'll have to go ahead and, and, right. and make amends with that. And, and that's all of us. You right. know? But, but at the same time, um, if you're watching this, uh, like I said, strive for your goals. Um, but never let that be who, who, let that never be what defines you. Like, make sure that what defines you, um, is just integrity. Um, you know, your, your, your loved ones knowing exactly who you are. And again, never letting that light that's on you be brighter than the light that's in you. So. So beautiful. So poetic. <laughs> it is really a romantic. <laughs> thank, thank you for that teleprompter back there. <laughs> ah, listen, that was straight from here. That was nah, straight. That's it, it. part of that freestyle <laughs> stuff in them. Yeah. Listen. So listen, we're about to go. Loso, you want to get a battle going on before? Nah, like, what's up? Nah, nah. 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 <laughs> All right, so I really appreciate you. Nah, I appreciate you. For real, it was so real. Much. It was real, real candid. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. come back. We gotta do this again. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got a date. Yeah. All right, so y'all listen. It won't be a romantic date though, because you know me. I'm These trash. only flowers. I'm I'm yeah, you yeah, said because what? I'm trash. <laughs> no, we gonna he gonna get right. Yeah, he yeah. gonna get right, right. And I ain't gonna have to make him. He's gonna want to. All right. No, so listen, I will see you guys again. He will be back soon. Mr. Carlito, Mr. Carlos, Mr. Loso. Um, all his information is on this interview. Um, y'all, y'all was on Candace's Candid Talk. So we will be seeing y'all again. Bye.